This week, I make Loki's Chintari Scepter to add to my Infinity Stone collection. Don't tell Thanos, okay? Hello, I'm Odin, and today is the first Wednesday for the first episode of the new Loki series on Disney+. I think it's time to make something Loki. I'm gonna make Loki's scepter from the Avengers. It's also the thing that held the Mind Stone. I made a full-size pattern for the scepter by exporting an outline of a 3D model using Tinkercad. If you print oversized images with Adobe Acrobat and use the poster button, Acrobat will automatically spread your drawing over many sheets of paper and keep it full size. This always looks too small to me. No, it's 36 inches. All right, this thing still just looks too small to me. I guess, fine. This is the size I'm gonna make it because this is accurate to the numbers that I've seen online. This is the right size for the staff. I found a 3D printable version of the staff. I like the profile of it, so I'm using that as a guide for the pieces that I'm gonna cut. What I wanna do is make this for multiple materials. I'm gonna use a bit of half-inch PVC pipe. This is left over for another project, so it's got spray paint on it, and it doesn't matter. But I'm gonna make that for the main handle. I'll need to cut it to, to, to fit. So I'll wrap this just like I have with the Kong Axe and a number of other things. I'll wrap this with foam, and that'll get me the golden handle. The two main silver blades that go out on the end, I'm gonna cut those out of sheets of what the foam. And then for the actual gemstone and the holder, I went ahead and 3D printed those because those are some pretty small parts with some intricate details, so why not 3D print them? Yeah, good, they are the right size for the plans. Gem holder, because this isn't actually the Mind Stone, right? This is what the Mind Stone was in. So that's the blue thing that the yellow Mind Stone was inside of. Does that make sense? So that goes here, and then I've got the little holder that goes off the end of it. So these two things I'm gonna clean up. Uh, Joe said he would airbrush this with a blue transparent lacquer, so I'm gonna let him do that. And then I'm gonna start working on the handle. PVC pipe is straight. The handle of the scepter is not so I make marks where I think I'll need to bend the pipe. And then heat the PVC with a heat gun. Once it's soft enough to bend, I can just hold it in shape until the plastic cools. And then I'm good to go. I just need to repeat this for all the bends that I wanna make. I cut the pipe down to about the right size. I'm gonna need a battery pack to power the LED that I wanna put in the blue gem. And what I've got is a five volt rechargeable power supply. This one was about $5 at Harbor Freight Tools. It's basically just an 18650 battery with some USB plugs for the power to be able to go in and come back out. Since both plugs are in the same spot, I'm gonna solder a bit of wire to the circuit board so I can run that out the other end in order to power my LED. I have plenty of cheap wire in this old Cat5 Ethernet cable. The pairs inside are rated for five volt and they're small enough to fit inside of the 3D printed part. I removed the battery and the electronics and soldered the wires to the power output leads on the USB plug. The solid color is my positive wire. I drilled a hole in the back of the box and pulled the wire through. And now I can put the power supply back together. It'll easily power a few five volt LEDs for hours. I set the battery aside for now and start making the handle. The first thing I do is wrap it in two millimeter HD foam. The scepter is kind of shaped like an axe handle, which is good. That gives me a place for the battery pack. I just need to build it up for the pack to fit. So I have three layers of six millimeter foam and I'm gluing on two more layers of black foam. Truthfully, I started with a scrap piece, so the side is cut square, but I'm gonna add two triangular strips and then the box shape will glue easier to the round handle. I cut down my pattern so I can trace the profile onto my oversized foam piece. And then I can cut the shape that I want on my bandsaw. I cut it smaller than the profile. I want to add foam in layers to bulk it back up to full size. This gives me the space that I need to hide the battery pack. Because at 26 millimeters thick, 
I can cut out a spot for it to go. I still need a power switch, and it looks like one of the best places will be at the base of the lower blade, which I have one of those made already. You didn't miss it, I just haven't talked about it yet. I mark where the base of the blade will fit on the handle, and I mark a spot for the switch right below that. I quickly cut out a small hole for a tiny switch with my rotary tool and then clean up the sides of the hobby knife. And the switch fits. Of course, it really didn't magically fit the first time. I made many adjustments, but I got it to fit. I know where the switch will go and I know where I'm going to place the battery. And then cut out the foam and the pipe with my bandsaw. The battery pack fits and the wire runs right up the PVC pipe. I clip the negative lead and solder the switch in place. My brain wants me to super glue it in to make it sure it's safe. My brain also tells me if I put super glue on it, I'm going to super glue the switch open or shut. I've got a power switch and it works just fine. But now it's going to get a little hard to describe just what all I'm doing next. Because basically, I'm sculpting with EVA foam. I'm adding pieces and carving them to get the shape that I want, or at least as close as I want. Grinding them back down and grinding the corners off the battery pack as well. I'm adding layers to the handle. Some of the layers are HD foam and some are what the foam. It just depends on how I want that part of the handle to feel. For the most part, the red two millimeter what the foam will be the outer layer. And I'm leaving some lines for details and looks. I start using aluminum foil for pattern making. Normally I put duct tape over the foil, but these parts are simple enough that I can just draw on the foil, cut it out, and then trace it all onto foam. It's always nice to have parts that fit. And this is pretty much all I plan on doing for the handle. I kind of want to keep it simple. Now it's time to add the lower blade. I suppose I should talk about how I made the blades. They were one of the first things I did when I started the build. Because when I was trying to figure out where I needed to solder the wires, I couldn't find any power. Is it just because it has to charge? That'd be great. You see, the battery pack wasn't charged yet. Great. I had to work on something else while the battery charged, which takes time. So I cut out an isolated copy of the blades, both the upper and the lower one. I glued some black poster board between two pieces of four millimeter foam. That'll stiffen up the foam a little. After I had rough cut foam on both sides of the poster board, then I followed my line and cut the blade out carefully. The lower blade was made the same way, poster board between four millimeter layers, but this blade has a little more detail. There's a few holes, and then there's a secondary two millimeter layer that fits over the blade. The edges of the red layer were rounded over to make them look less like cut foam. The main blade has one small detail that really stands out. Something I find amusing is that on the main blade of the scepter, you've got this notch like it's a pocket knife, which I guess maybe it is, but all right, it's there. Now I just need to get the edges beveled. Once the edges are beveled, that's about it for making the blades. After the lower blade was made, it was important to adjust it to fit my bent pipe handle. Now there's a cutout in the blade that has to line up with a blue gem so I need to get the size and placement just right. Which brings me back to where we were, gluing the lower blade onto the handle. The holder for the blue gem has been painted black, and when I was bending the PVC pipe core, I made sure the pipe was bent on the end to make a snug fit to this 3D printed piece. It's still hard to tell exactly where the blade needs to go so it'll fit the gem correctly, and the blue paint of the gem is still drying. All I need, all I need is, is this piece in here, which is like a piece of four with a couple of other things on it, right? It's multiple pieces. The first layer of this back piece glues to either side of the main blade. I cut a pattern piece, so the next three layers will be about the same size. And I cut two of these leaf back armor pieces. I cut the ends yeah, on an angle so they look thinner from even, the outside. Even and I glue them to the beveled edge on the bottom of the blade, which is just about the perfect place. Add a bit of four millimeter foam on the pipe as a spacer and glue the blade with its two wings right in place. 
I'm sure the Chitari use purple tape to hold their gems in place too. The gem holder has been super glued in place, so now it won't fall out. I work on the back so it'll all lay down mostly flat. A little aluminum foil and some help from a paper pattern, and I have the next layer, which also needs a cutout for the blade. The third layer, which is the last big layer, is sort of double-sided. I add another four millimeter spacer piece, so the top layer will be off the handle, and then I glue it in place. Notice there's still a cutout in the front of this layer because there's one more tiny thorn of a blade that gets glued in here. And there's also another two millimeter layer that goes over the back. It's just more surface detail. I cut out a small two millimeter panel to fit under the back plates. It goes around the power switch. But before that panel went in, I did go ahead and super glue the switch to the hole inside the pipe. Yeah. I think I'm pretty safe. Usually I way over glue that. <laughs> The last part is to make the bracket that goes around the gem and joins the two blades together. Joe dropped by to help finish the scepter and took over these brackets. And I'm sanding the Alex fast dry spackle from the back of the handle. I had spread the spackle into the larger cracks to try and fill them in. It takes an hour or so for fast dry to dry, but it works really well. Now Joe really worked on these brackets, getting the halves to be exactly the same adding the spacer that's needed for the thickness of the blade, and even gluing in some thin aluminum metal so the brackets can hold their shape around the gem. As Joe glued the bracket in place, I cut the diamond shapes that go on either side of the bracket, and then super glue them where they need to go. All right, I think I'm good for stopping here. There's a few more details, there's a few more um, panel lines and things I could put on it, but honestly, at this point, I'm afraid to use the wood burner on something that's uh, such a small radius, I'll probably end up regretting that decision. So I'll leave it smooth, because I think it'll look a lot better. Now to paint it, the one thing I can't recommend enough, the one thing that makes painting enjoyable and easy and, and, and rewarding is to get someone else to do it. Hey Joe, would you mind painting this for me? Yes, I would, I would love to paint this. Oh, thank you. I love painting. <laughs> I love painting too, which is probably why Odin is making me do it. <laughs> well, I'm going to go upstairs and, and, and actually start writing the video, so we'll have a video. That would be good. Oh, okay. Yeah, because Wednesday's tomorrow. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, sure. All right. <laughs> Joe mixes some plaid effects paints about 50-50 with window cleaner, which will let him use an airbrush with the paint. As a base, the full prop is spray painted with a couple of coats of black Plastidip. Because acrylic paint sticks to the Plastidip very easily, and black is an ideal base for metallic paints. He let the silver paint dry for over an hour, and then started to mask off the silver. And started the process for painting with gold, which is going to be most of the prop. The airbrush lets him get a couple of smooth coats very quickly and is ideal for painting metallics. When the gold paint fully dried, he went back and used some brown shoe polish to add some panel lines and shadow details onto the gold handle, and then added some black paint on the silver blades. Yep, totally happy with the paint job. So I need to put the gem on. What I want to do isn't just glue the LED on and then glue the gem over it. I need to put the diffuser in it. If you actually look closely at the one in the movie, it looks like it's stuffed full of crumpled up cellophane. So what I want to do with my 3D printed one is stuff it full of crumpled up cellophane. First, I attach some white five volt LEDs to the Cat5 wires. I tested the gem without the cellophane. It works, but it really does need crumpled plastic inside. First, I cut up some small pieces, stuff them inside the gem, and test. Looks great on that side. Now I tried a few other things, but what really worked was stuffing just a little bit inside first, and then wrap the LEDs with crumpled cellophane. Once everything's put inside, 
the plastic unwraps and looks perfect. Then just a little bit of super glue will hold the gem in place. All the materials I use in this video I already had in the shop. I put a part list in the description. So I guess this makes four of the Infinity Stones, uh, including my slightly oversized Tesseract. Still, this is pretty cool. I'm really happy to have all these and I'm really very pleased with how well this turned out. This, um, I wanna say thank you very much to Joe for coming out and giving me a hand with this. Not only with the painting, but there was, a, there was quite a bit of behind the scenes building and sanding as well. So thank you very much, Joe. I appreciate all of your help in the shop. If you wanna see any of these other Infinity Stone builds, um, I can put them all together into, I guess, a short little Infinity Stone playlist. Uh, so I've got these four. I do intend on making the Power Stone here soon. And got plans brewing on how to do the Soul Stone. But uh, we'll see how well that comes together when the time comes. I've got time, right? Now, one fun thing that I've noticed with the Mind Stone here uh, with, with Loki's Scepter is not only am I going to be able to just kind of reach out and, and control most of my friends, but it also has the added benefit of charging my electronic devices. Just benefits all the way around, right? But anyway, I am actually genuinely happy that I got the switch to work correctly, and that I didn't glue any of the switch electronic parts together, which I've done before, but I didn't today. Well. You know, there's gonna be lots of different ways that you can put together an Infinity Stone collection, but this is how Odin makes. Painted! I swear, this is the best way to paint. If you guys can, get a Joe. Okay, that's probably not the right way to put it. <laughs> the Chitauri mounted this thing. <laughs> Tape. I want to thank Landon Kelly, Jerry Ayers, and all of my Patreon supporters. My Patreon support is the number one thing that makes this show possible. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture.